Hey you all, Farmer Jesse here, back for another series season of videos. And one of the areas I'm going to put a lot more focus on this season is cover crops on a small scale. Now that doesn't mean the information contained in this video or other videos won't be relevant to large scales. Just that my farm is only an acre of permanent raised bed, so that's the context. But anyway, in today's video, we're going to discuss some of the do's and the don'ts of cover cropping because Maybe you've heard that cover crops are really good for your soil and weed control and disease suppression and I don't know, a million other things. And all that's true, or at least it can be, but what you may not have heard is what a mess cover crops can become when done poorly. So let's do it. First things first, if you're not subscribed to this channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button. And if you are subscribed, you're awesome. And if you gain something from this video or any of our videos, you can always support our work at patreon.com slash no-till growers. Okay, so cover crops, a brief primer, if you will. Cover crops are crops you grow between, beside, or even occasionally below cash crops. Uh, they can provide mulch, they can uh, gather or fix certain nutrients such as nitrogen from legumes. They increase soil respiration and soil organic matter. They hold soil in place, reduce weed pressure, um, call in beneficials. There are just a ton of reasons to use them. And what constitutes a cover crop is various annuals, uh, you know, including grains like cereal rye and wheat or legumes like cow peas or field peas or just about any bean or brassicas like mustard or whatever the heck buckwheat is. But essentially any annual crop that can be readily terminated can be a cover crop. However, this leads us to the first best way to screw up cover cropping, um, selecting the wrong cover crop. I go into great detail about this and how to choose uh, the right cover crop in a video appropriately called how to choose the right cover crop for what you need, um, which is linked here. But one of the biggest mistakes I see new cover croppers make is cover croppers a term people use that I see growers who've never used cover crops make. They get the most popular mix for the winter or the summer or whatever without giving a lot of thought to one, what they need from the cover crop, two, how they are going to terminate the cover crop, and three, what crop is supposed to come after that cover crop. For instance, if you need to be planting in your garden in March or April or whatever early in the spring is in your region, a winter cover crop of cereal rye uh, and vetch, for instance, will be a disaster, especially if you are not wanting to till the soil. Perhaps a winter killed or a more tender cover crop makes a little bit more sense in that scenario. Also, if you were wanting to direct seed something like baby greens or carrots in those beds, that biomass from the cover crop, specifically like a rye cover crop, the mulch from the plants, the biomass, is going to be a major disruption. As in you can't easily sow into a thick cover crop mulch without a special seeder. If you're using a drill, a seed drill, uh, for something like corn or soybeans or pumpkins, uh, that's a little bit of a different story, but carrots and the like are going to have a much harder time getting through a really thick mulch. Um, anyway, cover crop selection is critical, so watch that video or even pick up a copy of my book, The Living Soil Handbook from notillgrowers.com specifically, where the proceeds go to making you more content like this. Um, lots of info in there. So win-win. The last thing I'll add on this is that a diversity of cover crops within your cover crop mix is generally going to provide greater biomass production above and also below ground. Uh, just make sure whatever cover crops you use, especially when you're mixing them together, that they're compatible in terms of how they can be terminated and how they grow. But we'll talk about that in a second. Next big mistake I see people making, and indeed I have made myself, is poor soil preparation. Yes, for your cover crops. One of the things you will hear from the cover cropping gurus is that you need to treat your cover crop like a cash crop. And that's about the best advice anyone can give on this subject. If you wouldn't plant a cash crop into that soil, based on how it's prepared, don't plant a cover crop. Just get the soil right first. Do some upfront work so that you can maximize the benefits of the cover crop. If you have compacted ground, for instance, don't assume a cover crop like even the tillage radish, is going to swoop in and just save the day. It's a good crop, don't get me wrong, uh, and it's great at preserving nitrogen over the winter, but it's not a miracle worker. And in fact, it's not even that great of a decompactor as far as I can find in the studies, but why? Well, radishes, like most other crops, don't love growing in compaction, right? They like well-drained soils. Yes, even the so-called tillage radish. So 
that crop may not perform well in your soils if your soil is too hard or won't drain, which just wastes your seed costs and time. Instead, do some upfront work to mitigate the compaction, maybe a broad fork on a small scale or a subsoiler on a larger scale, harrow out the weeds, the germinating weeds using perhaps a stale seed bed method, and or perhaps address any severe drainage issues before sowing your cover crop. Yes, the cover crop will help improve water movement and compaction over time, but they have to be able to grow first. Ideally, you get the soil as clear of weeds as you possibly can, especially perennial weeds, and as decompacted as you possibly can before sowing your cover crop. The better your cover crop performs, the better the subsequent cash crop will do. And don't assume you can reclaim a field with cover crops. I see this sometimes just broadcasting or even drilling cover crops into a pasture, for instance. That's not gonna be a recipe for success for most of us. At best, it's gonna be a really lush field with a lot of weed pressure. Uh, there are exceptions to every rule, of course, but my suggestion is to get the soil prepped as well as you can first and then start on your cover cropping system. Another one, seed to soil contact. Uh, this is critical for having a good stand of cover crop, absolutely critical. So one mistake I sometimes see is that people will broadcast their seeds when they could direct sow them. You know, it's faster and sometimes you don't have a lot of choice and I get that, but if you do have a lot of choice, like you own a seed drill or just perhaps have well-prepared soil, um, then use the seeder. Otherwise you will need to firm in to cover it up to cover it up and firm in any seed that you broadcast. That is to say you will want to likely rake it in, um, you know, into the surface and then press it in with something heavy. For us, the power harrow works really well for that because it does both jobs kind of at the same time, but you could also use a, a rake, kick up a little sur surface soil around the seeds um, and then press it, press it in with like a bed roller or a cultipacker or whatever works, whatever you have, seed to soil contact. The seed in contact with the soil is the goal here. Um, so just make sure that the seeds are not just sitting on the surface. Otherwise you're just feeding the birds, which is a nice thing to do, but a little expensive. Hello, son. Before you sow any cover crop, know how you're going to kill it. Uh, I will dedicate more time to talking about cover crop termination soon. Well, as I start terminating some of our cover crops here, so I have some more recent footage to actually show you, but you can also watch this video from a few years ago, which has a lot of the same information, um, but it is absolutely essential that you know how, to, how the cover crop you've chosen is going to be terminated. Can it be crimped? Do you have a proper way to crimp it? And do you understand what milk stage is? Can the crop simply be mowed to kill it? Uh, do you have a powerful enough mower to do that? And do you know what stage the mowing will ki actually kill it? Um, can the winter kill it for you? Essentially, you have to ask yourself, what will it take for the crop to die and for you to put your cash crops in? And do you have the equipment and know-how to do so? Uh, those are critical questions because like I said, there are wonderful winter cover crops out there like, I don't know, Austrian winter pea and cereal rye and vetch, but you know, they're not just gonna be super simple to terminate without maybe tillage early, early on in the spring. Um, or there are also regional considerations, like for instance, um, that oats does not reliably winter kill in our region, 6B. Uh, so any further south than us in Kentucky, I wouldn't consider oats a winter kill cover crop. Winter kill just meaning a crop that dies in your average winter. Although oats are, for most of the country, good for that. And in that way, they're often in a lot of winter kill mixes. Um, another thing to simply keep in mind when planting cover crops is that high biomass cover crops like rye may also cool your soils to the point that the soil becomes difficult to plant crops like tomatoes um, until maybe the early summer. I have planted tomatoes into cool, crimped cover crops uh, sort of early in the spring. And although they did recover, they were not psyched about it early on. Uh, they kind of yellowed, they looked hungry. Um, and that may have made them more susceptible to pests and diseases. They did fine, but just something to keep in mind. Anyway, I hope that gave you some helpful stuff to work with as you're thinking about cover crops um, and more on cover crops on this channel soon. So hit that subscribe button. Like this video if you like this video. Consider signing up to be a patron at patreon.com slash no-till growers. That helps support this. Note that this video was also paid for in part by a grant from Southern Sayer. Thanks as always for watching. We'll see you next week. Bye. Oh,